Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. There's a new llama on the large language model block, and you may find it to be your new personal favourite. Why? Well, not only is it pretty good at chatting, but the licence now allows for both research and commercial use, which is excellent. Llama 2 comes in three model sizes, 7B, 13B and 70B. The 70B does need some pretty hefty hardware, but the 7B and 13B will run great on typical 3D gaming level home computer systems. As you can see here, Llama 2 was trained on 40% more data than Llama 1 and has double the context length. Down there in the model architecture, we can see pre-training tokens at 2 trillion and the context length at 4096. They've given us some benchmarks here, with the most obvious omission being the smaller Llama 1 models, as only the 65B model is listed there. But hey, basically, as you can see, the Llama 2 13B model is scoring higher than even the Falcon 40B model for most of the tests there. How can you get the model? Well, that information is available on their GitHub site. Basically, you can go over to the Meta AI website and accept their license. You can also go over to Hugging Face and request access there. Requesting access is really easy. You just have to fill in those details there and you've got the information about the community license agreement, which also comes with a fairly hefty acceptable use policy as well. So do make sure that you read all that, click I accept and then accept and continue. Once your request is approved, you will receive a signed URL over email, which you can use, but do bear in mind those links expire after 24 hours or a certain number of downloads, which I believe is five. That's why it's great to also request access on Hugging Face as well. There it is, because then you can download the files at any time you like. While you could use the Facebook research code there, the UberBooger text generation web user interface is a much better choice. This can be installed using any of those one-click installers there. Simply pick the one that is relevant to the operating system which you use. Or, if you prefer to actually understand what you're doing and installing, then you just have to run the six commands shown under the what they term as a manual installation, which is basically just a normal installation like you'd find on any other Python repository. If you need more installation information, then do check out my video from the beginning of March this year. The focus today, however, is on these new Llama 2 models. I've not tested the 70B model as I'm just using my gaming PC here, but I have had a look at both the 13 and 7B versions. If you've got 24 gig of VRAM, I'd suggest going for the 13B model to start with. You want the ones with dash HF on the end there for the text generation web interface. Now you should note, of course, that these downloads are quite large. If we have a look there at the files and versions, you see you've got the bin files there, 996. So you'll be downloading about 26 gigs worth of data for that 13B model. Also available are a whole load of models from the bloke, and he includes quantized options for those with really low level hardware, for example. Downloading the models from the bloke on Hugging Face is very, very easy indeed. Just go up there, click copy model name to clipboard. When you click it, that will say copied, and then you can go over into your text generation web interface, over onto the model tab, paste it into that download custom model and then click the download button. Once downloaded, you can hit the little refresh icon and you will have the model appear in your list. If the meta hugging face download gives an error, you can simply download the required files manually there. As you can see, download file. If you're interested in the perplexity evaluation, I ran the wiki text one on both the 7B and 13B models just to see what the scores would come out like. Unsurprisingly, the 13B model is the best there, but the 7B model is also very good comparatively as well. The chat versions score slightly worse, and another thing to note is there doesn't seem to be any difference there between the model files from Meta or from the bloke. 
pretty much everything is set up for you automatically in chat mode. But just in case, we can have a look at the chat settings tab up at the top there. There we've got the basic character. And if we look on the instruction template, that should be set to Llama 2. All right, let's get to chatting and seeing how this thing does. I'm using the non-chat model here just because it scored slightly better. So here we are, we're asking for the full name of Stevie Wonder. Has it got it correct there? It says his full name is Steve Land Hardaway Morris. I'll let you figure out if that is correct. All right, let's try another one. Nothing gets this right ever. So on which platform was the Game Tunnels of Doom released? And it thinks for some reason it was released on the Apple II. That is, of course, completely false. And once again, I will let you figure out what the correct answer is to that. How about which nation do you think eats more macaroni cheese than any other in the world? And apparently, according to the research conducted by Kraft Foods, it's the United States. Well, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Canada. Sorry, it's the United States. You have been beaten. All right. How about explain in simple terms how to copy and paste a file using the default Microsoft Windows 10 graphical user interface. And there it's given me the instructions to copy and paste. And those look pretty good. I think I could figure out how to copy and paste from that. Now, reasoning tests normally fail wildly in hilarious ways using these language models, so let's see. If Mary has got three apples and John has five, how many apples are there in total? Let's see, there are eight apples in total. All right, that's fine, that's good. But what, what is it going on about now? However, if one person has more apples than the other, then it depends on who has more apple what is it going on about so it got the right answer but it's carried on with a whole load of gibberish there afterwards for some reason all right let's try some even more complex reasoning can it figure this out person a pointed at person b person b pointed at a tree person a did not point at a tree. Assuming the first two statements are correct, is the third statement true or false? And it says the third statement is false because we know that person A cannot have pointed at a tree based on the second statement. So it has absolutely no idea what is going on there at all. All right, let's try some more basic reasoning here. So we've got, when dealing with an inference question, you must draw conclusions from observed or assumed facts. So there, basically, I'm saying if everybody is outside, then you're going to be both anxious and nervous. Has it figured this out? OK, so it's telling me once again what an inference question is. And apparently, in this case, we can see that the conclusion does not necessarily follow from the premises provided. Well, okay, all right, I'll, uh, I'll leave it up to you to figure out how it got that wrong. Now, summarizing text has been uh, slightly tricky for some models in the past. So let's see how this one does here. I've given it a little passage from a famous book and can it work out what is going on there? It seems to be doing very well, actually. The passage discusses a concept of abstract objects, such as lines and planes, which have no physical form and yet still possess certain properties. It argues that although these entities appear to lack substance, they nevertheless remain meaningful within mathematics and science. I think overall that's a, a fairly reasonable summary of that text. So is it any good at coding? Let's have a look here. So write a complete Python 3 script that outputs the first seven numbers in the Fibonacci sequence in reverse order. Of course, as we can see at a glance, it's absolutely rubbish at coding. And apparently it thinks the first seven numbers in the Fibonacci sequence in reverse order are actually in the normal order. That's OK. We don't really mind it being pants at coding. How about creative writing here? I'm looking for a six line poem about a nerdy rodent. Obviously, you know, I'm looking for can it count six lines and is the poem any good? And the answer is no, it can't count to six. Uh, is the poem any good? Um, I guess, I guess, I guess it's all right. It's not too bad poem wise.
Okay, let's try another one. How about using the style of Shakespeare? Give me a two-verse song about a rodent which includes a funny chorus. Okay, well, that's a complete failure. It is neither the song, and it seems to have sort of mixed various nursery rhymes together. Not sure what's going on there. However, if I switch over to the chat model instead, we'll, we'll ask it the same thing there. Using the style of Shakespeare, give me that two-verse song. And now it is doing ever so much better here. We have the Shakespeare style. It's got a little bit in there. It's got a chorus. So I think that is doing much, much better. So let's do that coding question again with the chat version of the model. And as you can see, it's attempted to do some Python code, but once again, got it completely wrong. And the text underneath is even funnier. And what does the chat model think about reasoning? Can this do any better than the other one? Well, apparently that conclusion does not follow. How about if we try to tell the difference between a person and a tree? Can it do that? Uh, yes and no, it just seems to be completely contradicting itself every way that it can. Okay, how about if we try something fairly simple, like translating a phrase into a different language? There's its attempt. Once again, I will leave it to you to figure out just exactly how correct that answer is. All right, what other things can we do in here? Well, we've got our character gallery, haven't we? So how well does it work with different characters? Because we want to be good, I'm going to try Morality Bot. There is Morality Bot. He always answers in the most moral way possible. So let's ask him this question. How can I be a good person. I think it comes back with a fairly reasonable answer. How about if I wanted to do that same sort of thing as a pirate instead? Okay, we're going to ask the pirate, how can I be a good person? Is he going to stay in character? Yes, he is. There he is. Hoist the colors, matey. Being a good person is all about following your heart and doing what feels right. <laughs> Overall, I've had a lot of fun with both the chat and the non-chat versions of these models. They've both got their own little pros and cons, but overall, I've had a very good and very fun experience. It certainly takes on the characters very well indeed. If you haven't got this text generation web interface loaded up as yet, then do check out this next Nerdy Rodent video.